Welcome back. Let's take you to this story now. Astronomers have unveiled the first image of the supermassive black hole at the center of our own Milky Way galaxy. The image was produced by a global research team called the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration using observations from a worldwide network of radio telescopes. Now, let's discuss this further. We're now joined by Zoom by Professor Roger Dean, the director of the WITS Center for Astrophysics. Physics. Prof, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Uh, now, you were one of two scientists from South Africa to form part of the over 300 researchers from 80 institutions, I believe, around the world that together make up the EHT, otherwise known as the Event Horizon a Telescope Collaboration. Talk to us in layman's terms, if indeed the first image of the first uh, of the massive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy has indeed been revealed and also what this means for science. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's, uh, it's a delight to be on. Um, it's, it's really a, an exciting day for us. Um, we've indeed revealed the first image of the supermassive black holes, that, the hole that lies in the heart of our galaxy. Um, it's called Sagittarius A star, and it's a black hole with a mass of 4 million times the sun. So what that means is you've scrunched a whole lot of mass in a very small region of space-time. It's actually a region smaller than the orbit of Mercury around the sun. The reason that's interesting is because you're basically looking at one of the extremes of physics. Gravity in its um, absolute uh, extreme at the center of our galaxy, which is our galactic home. Now, talk to us uh, firstly, again, in layman's terms, uh, you know, just exactly what the black hole is. And, and of course, why it's been so difficult to capture. Uh, we know that just several years ago, you know, scientists tried, but unfortunately, the imaging was not so clear. Well, uh, two years ago, uh, three years ago, in 2019, we released the first image of a black hole. Mm -hmm. But that was of a different beast altogether. So that was of a, a very, very massive galaxy. Uh, the black hole at the center of a very massive galaxy, 55 million light years away, so very far away. And the mass of that black hole was six and a half billion times the mass of the sun. The reason this one is interesting is because it is our, our galactic black hole in our, uh, in our neighborhood, in our home. We live in the outskirts of our galaxy. Um, but this is, this, is, uh, this is hugely important for our understanding of our own, uh, our own cosmic neighborhood and our, our galactic home. Uh, now, Prof, just talk to us about the collaborative effort, because we understand, of course, a lot of researchers were involved, uh, a number of facilities also involved in the various, uh, uh, you know, different countries. Talk to us about what it meant to establish these various centers to ensure that this evidence is then captured. Well, one of the wonderful things about, about science and, and certainly astronomy is you get to work with people across the globe and that could be no more true than with the Event Horizon Telescope. It, it needs both um, antennas spread across the globe because the further your antennas apart, the, the sharper the image that you can make. And we needed a very sharp image to capture the, this image, a sharp uh, telescope to capture this image. Um, but the, the second thing is just the, the expertise. You know, you mentioned th over 300 researchers as part of this collaboration. Um, these range from engineers to artificial intelligence experts through to astronomers, physicists, um, software engineers. And we have a huge range of, of expertise and divul diverse cultures coming from um, 80 institutes and four continents. So, so that in itself was just an absolute delight, being part of such a cutting edge team uh, spread across the globe. Obviously we had our challenges. The pandemic uh, stopped us from meeting together as a global collaboration. And that coupled with the fact that um, the smaller black hole is far more challenging to image because it lies at the heart of our galaxy and we have to peer through dust and gas, uh, made us a, a longer effort than the 2019 result, but one we're exceptionally proud of. Mm. Now, now we understand, of course, that there is this bid uh, currently for South Africa to host the new uh, Event Horizon uh, Telescope. Uh, you know, if successful, talk to us about what this would mean for Southern Africa or in fact, even Africa as a whole. Well, as you uh, no doubt know, um, Africa is really doing exceptionally well in terms of um, attracting world-class infrastructure for astronomy. But we want to do more than just host, and we want to actually participate in this. And we've seen this with uh, the lead-up to the Square Kilometre Array and the Meerkat Telescope, 
um, in, in, in the Karoo, where we have exceptional young scientists coming through the ranks now, thanks to a lot of investment in human capacity development. But in terms of the, um, what is in the early stages of a concept of, ha of hosting one of these stations, um, we're extremely excited about that because the Event Horizon Telescope does very, very important science in probing fundamental physics, um, the nature of, of gravity. And at present, we only have two of us uh, involved on, in that on the African soil. Mm -hmm. Now, given our geographic advantage and given the, the wealth of, of, of expertise we've developed alongside the development towards the Square Kilometer Array Project, both engineering and scientific and technical algorithmic, I, I would see it as a shame for us not to take both our geographic and human advantage and, and participate in this globe-spanning experiment. Just to talk on a personal level, I mean, this is a huge feat for you and your colleague. And in fact, uh, you know, the institution that you represent from a personal perspective, what did it mean to be part of this of this project? I also can imagine how tired you must be. <laughs> well, um, it's an absolute delight. I, I think, you know, when you do what you're passionate about, you're, you're energized by that. Mm. Um, and the EHT, I'm sure. Uh, I, uh, it was conveyed just how passionate we are about it, and it seems to capture the public as well, which is just an added bonus. Um, no, so so maybe I'm a little bit tired because I was working on my presentation till late last night. Um, but it's uh, it, it's 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 an it's a very energising endeavour to be part of these kinds of experiments, and the EHT really is at, at some of the extremes. Um, we're working extremely hard on on the Meerkat telescope and doing a lot of wonderful wonderful things here at Fitz and, and in the northern part of the country. Um, but hugely exciting to be part of this, yes. I can imagine. Uh, just as a final question, you know, um, talk to us about plans to transform the planetarium to a digital dome, which will be open to the public, we believe, uh, later this year. So we've been working on this for, for quite a number of years now. Um, the, the Witz Planetarium is 61 years old. It has an incredibly proud history. In fact, the, the, the lunar landings were shown here, uh, recordings that were brought in from London, um, Apollo 11. So it, that is just one example of you know, some of the history that this wonderful facility, which is the largest in sub-Saharan Africa, has seen. But it needs to move in this new chapter, and there's no better time that as, as Witz looks towards its second hundred years, we're celebrating our centenary this year, that we look to upgrading this facility to a fully digital system, and one that it's not just a planetarium, but is actually a cutting edge multidisciplinary facility. So on, on top of um, being a beautiful theater that you can immerse yourself in uh, either, the, either the, the night sky or um, whether it's, it's a climate model, we're also building a digital uh, um, production laboratory. So we can actually use that advantage we have of the planetarium being on a university campus alongside world-class uh, uh, academic researchers and the interface that this has with the public and with, you know, the, the almost 100,000 school learners that pass through this auditorium every year, well, pre-pandemic at least. I think what makes it exciting is that it will be accessible to every South African. In fact, uh, everyone in the continent in all walks of life. That's fantastic. Prof, thank you so much for your time and congratulations again to you and your team. Thank you so much for having me.